Hey guys, this is Sari Torres. This is Frankie. And we're the Pixel Slayers. And this is Mag Archive, where we look at old video game magazines. We haven't done one of these in a while. No, we haven't. And this is from, uh, what is it, June 1999. Yep, volume 121 of Nintendo Power, the Pokemon Snap Edition. Yeah, with the new Pokemon Snap being announced earlier on in the week, we wanted to uh, go back in time and check out a... Uh, old magazine with the first Pokemon Snap. This one also talks about Star Wars Episode One Racer, which was re-released recently. Yep. And it's also got WWF Attitude. Got that attitude. Yep. And oh my god, I already love this. That is cool. If you don't know how to evolve Pikachu into Raichu, oh, you fat need help. Pikachu. That fat Pikachu. I love fat Pikachu. 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 <laughs> Waka -waka. Oh uh, my god. Oh my god, that's cute. Yeah, it's got all the old, I love this kind of old artwork like of the Pokemon. Oh. And don't forget to fill out your registration card to sign up for a year subscription. Definitely. But if you get um, three years, you get the best deal. And obviously the answer to this is a Thunderstone. Duh. Spoiler. Spoiler alert. Also, look at the old, the old screenshots of red and blue and yellow. That's so cool. You can call it toll free. It's interesting too, you'll notice there's no website on here. Do you need 1 800 Collect to call toll free or can you just oh call my a number? God. Or 1 800 Call ETT? <laughs> oh, yeah, I remember all of those collect call number things. Oh my God. Yeah, here's a car game. Remember this came out on Dreamcast? Um, one of those cart games. Yeah, I, I never played that, that one. It was like two that came out at launch for Dreamcast. I had this for computer and it. Um, <laughs> I remember it had an error on the CD where he would just repeat mosquitoes. Why did it have to be mosquitoes just over and over? We never got past that level. Yeah. <laughs> it was pretty bad. Here we go. Pokemon Snap. Oh my goodness. I love this part where you have to save the Jigglypuffs and then they sing for you at the end. Oh, wild Pokemon are running free on the Nintendo 64. And I, I think I love about this game is it's, it feels like you're really in that world. And it's just kind of an atmospheric game. It's nothing crazy, but it's also just really different. So and we have Player's Pulse. So I love these old letters, and I like the artwork in Nintendo Power. Like, Pikachu. I see there's a lot of sort of... um. Smash Brothers inspired things where they're all fighting each other. Um, interesting. Interesting. <laughs> <laughs> uh, if you've seen one of one of these Mag Archive videos before, we, we don't go through everything. If you want to really read something, you know, feel free to pause it, read whatever you want. We just sort of go through what what seems cool to us. I love looking at these top charts. Does it tell you what was really popular at the time? Yeah. And they don't show, since it was Nintendo Power, you only see Nintendo top oh, charts. Oh, yeah, that's all they're going to talk about. And, of course, we got Ocarina of Time, GoldenEye 007, and Mario Party at the top three. And then for for the Game Boy top ten, we got Pokemon at top. They don't distinguish between the versions. It's just Pokemon. And it's weird because there'll never be another one where they just call it Pokemon, you know? Uh, I mean, even though there was red and blue, they probably just sort of lumped them together. And to give you an idea, the handheld at the time was the Game Boy Color. I believe that mm -hmm. came out uh, the prior uh, Christmas was like the V system. And I see Tetris DX on there, so that's definitely... Yeah, that's a re reversion version of the original Tetris that came out as a launch game with the Game Boy Color. Yeah. I remember being so jealous of the... Spoiled rich kids. <laughs> I got Game Boy Colors. Yeah, I remember when my brother got his Game Boy Color, I inherited his original Game Boy. And I was fine with that for when I had it. I had a heck of a time with it. Um, the shores of Pokemon Island are about to open and allow visitors. And this is cool. If you're our age, you probably remember seeing some of these in video rental stores. Gotta print them out. It was a Pokemon printer. We could get your Pokemon Snap pictures printed under little stickers. We actually, I don't know, about a couple years ago, we bought this used version of Smash Brothers, and it came with one of those stickers on top. Yeah, I cleaned the cartridge really good, but I made sure to leave the sticker. Oh, yeah, I told her, you leave that sticker <laughs> on there. I want that sticker. So, yeah, I don't know whose this was, but I'm glad to have their Pokemon Snap 
sticker. And yeah. man, it was really another time being able to go to Blockbuster. And they always had these cool things. Like, like obviously in the late 90s, it was this. But they always had some kind of weird, like, cartridge-based uh, machine that would yeah, do something. like a gimmick sort of thing. Oh, yeah. I've, I've seen, I saw someone on Twitter that has one of these. And, ah. Uh, so jealous because it's probably worth so much money and it's even, just super cool i don't even know how they would get that because those were like provided by nintendo but yeah you know it's... there we go a day at the beach now this is going to go through each of the levels of the game and honestly i might be able to use some of these these <laughs> tricks i always loved making meowth kind of yell at you which is what this what this sticker is from i always thought it was so cute and he even makes the meowth kind of thing from the uh cartoon I think it's so cute when you feed them apples. Like, oh. Yeah. Oh, if you like cute things and you like Pokemon, this is it. Oh, you gotta play Snap. I remember the first time you showed me this because I didn't have a 64. I was uh, playing PlayStation, and then I got a Dreamcast, and I got the 64 later. So I actually skipped this game when it was new. But I remember the first time you showed me all that, and like, mm -hmm. oh my gosh. It's just, it's a cuteness explosion. Oh, and the, I remember being able to lure all the uh, Charmanders <laughs> onto one spot so you can get that picture. You get the multiple bonus for getting multiple Charmanders. They all just kind of stare at you, and you can play the Pokey Flute. Ugh. So when's the new one come out again? I don't know. They don't have a release date. Even for the pre-orders, they don't say. Hopefully um, it's sooner than later. Oh, in this part where you get to save the Jigglypuffs from the coughings, and then they sing for you at the end. And um, you might hear our own Pokemon or kitty cat in the background. <laughs> the Nintendo 64 cat. Yes. <laughs> cat that off doesn't work. <laughs> um, here we have the Rapids. The Rapids was probably the most frustrating level for me because you had to get that switch that you had to get a um i think was it a squirtle no it was a oh yeah so i think it's a squirtle that goes in its shell and you have to knock over a manky with it and it's just such a pain if you don't get it you have to start the whole video over <laughs> and we've got another cat we have just... tons of cats surrounding the uh, just don't worry about area. it we've got meowths and persians and skitties all right, I don't remember this I one. I remember seeing this game at the used game shop. It was really cheap. Probably tells you about the quality of the title. <laughs> yeah. That, hmm. So are you a... Is that a carrot? I don't know. I, I don't know either. I don't know what to think about that. Uh, the only thing I remember about Ken Griffey Jr. is he's in that Simpsons episode where they play baseball. <laughs> He was a pretty popular baseball player at the time, like as popular as like Derek Jeter was about five years ago. Um, I remember there was this home run game. I don't know if I think they had this. I think this might have been the sequel, but there was like some home run game I would play with my friends, and uh, it was actually pretty fun. Uh, the '64 actually had a lot of good baseball games, surprisingly. Yeah, I I mean I kind of that's just like a blank spot in my knowledge is sports games and anything sports related because. I didn't really like sports, and nobody in my family really liked them, so it's kind of just something I don't know a lot of knowledge about. I've always liked baseball games. I remember getting uh, World, World Series Baseball 2K1 for the Dreamcast. Ooh. I've always been into baseball games, but and I do like sports a little bit, mm -hmm. but not like that big of a sport. Yeah, game. I don't like hate sports, but I, it's just kind of not my thing. But uh, I know there was a baseball game that I played for the 64 at my neighbor's house, but I cannot for life of me know which one it was. It's probably the home run one. That was really popular. Yeah. Bust to Move 99. I remember all the Bust to Move games had really weird advertising. When I think of Bust to Move, I think of a 50 year old man wearing a Speedo <laughs> swimsuit. And it's a flappers. puzzle game. What the heck? And of course, that's, that's Puyo Puyo, really, isn't it? No. Puyo Puyo oh. is a different game. That's a Sega based game. Uh, oh, Bust the okay. Move is a completely different franchise, but it's kind of in the same world, but it's not, I mean, yeah. not, not like world, but it's the same, same like, type idea. of game, but it's very yeah. different. Okay. And here's a walkthrough of that Bugs Life game that <laughs> completely errored out on my computer. And I'm totally recognizing these little assets there man it's weird how a bug's life is pretty big when it came out and a lot of people just forgot about it yeah i i, I don't know it's it's probably my second well no it's my third least favorite pixar movie yeah i mean it's 
I don't hate it, but I don't love it. But I mean, it was all right, but it was big at the time too. Yeah, I remember seeing a lot of ads for it. V Rally. That looks great. <laughs> yep. Classified information. Shh. Oh my goodness. So there's this game called Mario Party coming out pretty soon. Oh, this is, it's actually already out. This is how you can get easy money. This is how you break your joystick. Oh my god, yeah. <laughs> Load Runner 3D, NHL Breakaway 99. There's more classified information. This is mostly cheat codes or tips and stuff like that. Yeah. Of course, you could send something to the P.O. box. Power panel. What? Oh, so I guess it's, is it like a job at Nintendo Power? I have no idea. Well, it's actually, yeah, it kind of seems like a, huh. I don't know if that's weird. If anyone knows more about this, let us know. If you're on the power panel, definitely let us Whoa, know. Well, yeah, definitely. <laughs> well, here's Star Wars Episode One Racer. I was very disappointed that they didn't do more to upscale this game for the Switch. Um, it's like, they talk about, oh, it looks better than the 64 version, but it kind of looks just like the Dreamcast version, just yeah. running on the Switch. Granted, the Dreamcast version is pretty expensive right now. And it looks really good. Like, I'm kind of on the fence whether or not I want to buy it. Yeah. It's, it's a great game. It's actually... It is really fun. I had it for the Dreamcast back in 2000, and I played it a lot. It was a really fun game. So I'm kind of wanting to buy it because I regret selling my Dreamcast copy back in the day. So I may pick this up for the Switch yet. It's interesting because I feel like this game has better clout than the actual movie it was based on. Oh, yeah. Um, I know that there's still the fans out there of the episode one, but this game is pretty much always fondly remembered, so it's interesting our cat thinks it is at least yeah <laughs> and this is just telling us about all the different levels doug derby dork derby Dur -dur -dur. <laughs> oh, oh we got a fold out yeah Ooh, look at that look at those army men legs oh god those army men games are so terrible uh, i never really liked them they were like it was almost like a joke I remember, like, back in the day, like, Army Man games were just kind of almost like a joke. Yeah, I don't know. The first few were really good, but then they just kept making them, and the quality and it kind of became like a gimmick, worse. yeah. Oh, this is what I wanted to talk about. So, WWF Attitude. This is some of what they're showing off. So. Uh, it, it, this whole page smells like Limp Bizkit. <laughs> but look at this image. It's, that's the texture map showing lifelike detail. Look at that. It is awful. That's amazing right there. Look at that lifelike detail. Stone cold modes. I never... My brother was into the 80s wrestling. Like WWF in the 80s was kind of completely different than WWF in the late 90s. Yeah. And I never got it then. And then I definitely did not get it. Yeah. yeah. Uh, you know, one thing I do give credit, though, is I never really got wrestling, but one thing I really like is I like, I'm probably going to, I don't even know if this is the right set of letters, AEW, I think that's the current one. It's actually kind of entertaining. I watch a few things and I'm actually kind of impressed, but uh -huh. I don't think I'm going to go on my way to watch it, but I respect <laughs> those who do. All mm -hmm. right. And there's Dwayne The Rock Johnson. Yeah. Before he was known as the guy that did, like, if, Disney movies and stuff. I don't know if this guy's career is going to go anywhere. <laughs> it's kind of amazing how certain people you just think, oh, they're, they're not going to go anywhere. And then they, like, it's not that I didn't think he was going to go anywhere, but I didn't think he was going to be, like, an actor that is so well known for so many <laughs> things. I thought he'd stay with wrestling and be known for that. But now it's like, he's like a house, household name for his acting, which is, I mean, good for him. He seems like a nice guy. V rally game again. V rally 99. It's a bigger ad, or is that actually talking about the game? Uh, this is actually talking about the game. Okay. Actually, it looks pretty dated even for then. Like, yeah. There's other 64 racing games that look a lot better than that. Yeah. Like, that doesn't look like they try very hard. It almost looks like a first generation PS1 racing. Game. Yeah. Maybe they called it in on that one. I don't know. I never played this one, so I can't really say. Stay one step ahead, Roadrunner 3D. <laughs> I remember my... So most of my N64 experience as a kid came from my neighbor's house because they had one. 
and we went over there almost every day and they had this game and we never played it and so i have no idea what it's about but i know that it is a game that exists and it's a load yeah it's a load of running running in three, I guess. In three in, dimensions in three dimensions See, Ooh, driver champion. Look how much I don't even know anything about this game, but look how much better this game looks compared to the other one we just saw. I don't know. I tell you, these graphics. And here comes and our cat, a cat again. again. More car game. Yep. <clears throat> oh, here oh we go. Oh Superman's gosh. in a new dimension. Oh, oh my if gosh. you don't know, this is one of the most notoriously bad games for the n64 it's like a ring runner simulator yeah if yeah you should know this i'm sure you know this yeah but if you don't look up gameplay videos for superman 64 it's bad but this is kind of a cool ad though that they make it look like a newspaper but still it's it's bad i was game. gonna say playing doom eternal i was getting um if you want to know my opinion on doom eternal it, this is not my opinion i enjoy doom eternal but there were certain parts of doom eternal that reminded me of Superman 64. That's mm. all I'm going to say. Yep. Yep. <laughs> Monaco Grand Prix. As a kid, I always thought it was pricks. It was grand, grand pricks. It was a Grand Pricks. Is it a politician simulator? It, yes, the pricks. <laughs> um, yeah, I mean, certain... It seems like there's some car racing games that stand out, and then there's just a whole bunch that are just kind of the same thing. Conker's oh. Pocket Tales. This was the Game Boy Color version. But, I mean, it wasn't even a version. It was just a, a sort of spin-off. Wasn't this made before they decided that Conker was going to be a rated M game? I, I thought I so. heard that somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Conker wasn't originally going to be a rated M game. Yeah, and this, this sort of shows you, like, what could have been if he would have actually... Like, even look at his face there. He seems pretty yeah, I, tame. I don't know, like... I I understand why it holds up because of it, it just the history of the game, but I don't feel like the game holds up anymore overall. Like, yeah, it's, it's definitely a sign of that time place, but yeah, it's definitely not my favorite sixty four game. Yeah, but anyways, this is just different. It's it's where they went so in depth too into some of these um, um some of these very lower poly games but i mean at the time it's it's we've gotten like the two roads have become one now with um portable gaming versus <laughs> console gaming and here it's where they were two very different paths because you look at the 64 games and you look at the graphics in these and they're just so different but that's just what people were used to is that there were two lanes of games yeah if you're going to play a portable game you just expect a 2d yeah, and Even, now, yeah, now it's like the first time they're both on the same path, same, at least same level. Yeah, <laughs> your Game Boy is about to become a man. Oh my God, a man, or, a the, game man. That is that is so. I almost said a man boy, <laughs> a game man. That is so, just that wow, is so. so Duke Nukem. It's so Duke Nukem though. So that I mean, I I wish. Oh man. I wish LGR could come over here and do his Duke Nukem voice. If you haven't seen LGR, he does a perfect Duke Nukem voice. Your Game Boy is about to become a man. Um, yeah, but I honestly, this looks kind of cool. It almost reminds me of Duke Nukem 1 and 2 for DOS. If you've never played those, they were the first Duke Nukems, and they were kind of like this, like, like side-scrolling side shooters. Honestly, my favorite is Duke Nukem 1. Like, playing down the DOS when I first got my 386 mm -hmm. back in the day, I loved that game. Oh, man. Duke 2 soundtrack, though. If you've never heard it, you need to look it up. It I is. remember getting the turkeys and the sodas. Yeah. <laughs> okay. NBA Courtside 2. This is a Kobe Bryant game. Oh, yeah. Oh, that's interesting. Yep. Wow. There's no I in team. Wow, yeah. Kobe Bryant and NBA courtside. Oh, that's sad. Morning glory. They, I noticed they're kind of emphasizing too the fact that they can put their faces 
um, on the characters. It says it's our goal for every gamer to recognize every NBA player. Yeah. That was a new concept at that point. I mean, it wasn't completely new. It just wasn't really attainable because, I mean, before then you'd have like they kind of look like them. Yeah, or it would just be sort of cartoonish. Yeah, yeah. And here you've got they were actually doing mocap. Seems so silly doing mocap for such a low polygon count. Yeah, yeah. but they did it. That's I had to do. I remember in Final Fantasy VIII in the credits they actually have um, they actually have actors for each of the characters just for their FMV sequences and now looking at the graphics it's like hmm. Sight Bite sixty four. <laughs> yep. I've I, never played this one. I love Excite Bike for the NES, but never really cared to play the sixty four one. Mm. Doesn't really look like the same concept at all. Yeah. Maybe it is, but I don't know. <laughs> Always freeze your leftovers, wow. Mm -hmm. More army men, sergeants, heroes, really promoting that. R Type DX. So this would have been R Type for the Game Boy Color. It shows you the, the difference because a lot of people don't realize the Game Boy Color was more than just a Game Boy with color. It actually had a way more powerful uh, CPU. Like it was, a, it was still a Z80 CPU, but it actually could do more. Um, like if the Game Boy game was. A Game Boy Color game, you could actually achieve like NES quality graphics, mm -hmm. and that's a lot more than just getting something like this and putting color to it. Yeah, definitely. Like, you could tell the difference right there, and that's why you had those games that were only for Game Boy Color, whereas some could be on both. Yeah, because they ran at a higher frequency and they were displaying way more colors. Yeah. The whole walkthrough right here. Huh? Yeah. Again, if you need a walkthrough for R Type DX, go ahead and pause it. We're just going to kind of carry through some of these. I, I think it's easy, interesting, too, that they called those the DX games. Because you also had, like, Link's Awakening DX. <laughs> and it's so close to DS, but yet that was two generations ahead. And yeah. it's just kind of weird. Counselor's Corner. That's a weird N64 logo. I, I don't know. That's yeah. weird. It's Photoshop 3.0 logo. Yeah. I've heard good things about Beetle Adventure Racing. It's kind it's of one of those hidden really, gems. It's supposed to be a pretty good game. That and uh, Mickey's Racer. It's supposed to be pretty good. Yeah, game. that one was all right. I tried that one out and it, it was okay. Um, Wario Land 2 might be my least favorite of all the Warios. I don't know. It's just the, the abilities weren't really there. I don't know. This came with uh, with uh, 64. This was a packing game. Um, oh, yeah, there's actually a, a there's actually an ad, ad for it in the back. But yeah, a lot of people just kind of ended up with this game in, in their, you know, Christmas box because it came with the system. Mm -hmm. Never played uh, many of them for very long. Wasn't really my cup of tea, but someone is. <laughs> Wait, many what? I never played... Uh, oh, Rogue Squadron. Squadron. For some reason, I thought that was the racer game. No. Yeah, I played the Rogue Squadron game on the 64. I got stuck on, like, level I just, three. I've never been into it. I'm not really a... St this might be a shock to people, but I'm not really into Star Wars that much. Yeah, I'm kind of just a casual, like, I'll watch some movies. Uh, I'm, I'm more Star Trek. But we have Player's Poll Contest. Win a Pokemon Snap Photo Safari. Look at, you could fill out this form. And here we have a trip to Disney's Animal Kingdom. That was just opening about this time. That cool Pikachu camera, I want that. Yeah, all these other great prizes. Pocus Center. Pocus Center. I like those little stuffies. I have a couple of them, I think. Yeah, I think we might have that Pikachu and the Eevee. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah, look at that. This was kind of, yeah, I'm talking about Pokemon Yellow and Pikachu following you a lot around. That was a big deal. It's a fad. It's a fad. Oh, yeah. Pokemon's just a fad. It's not going to be around in a couple of years. I, I remember being told that by so many relatives <laughs> as a kid. And no, I still play Pokemon. I uh, love Pokemon. There was a cat. All-Star Baseball 2000. I don't know what the Game Boy version was like, but I remember specifically this being Pan as like one of the worst baseball games. Why ever. to Acclaim? What? Acclaim makes it, but... I know, but... I it know. doesn't even make sense, no. It's like a bad pun that isn't even, like, a pun, really. I don't know. Like I said, the Game Boy game might have been good, but I remember it being laughably bad for the console. I think this might be the Game Boy game. It is. But I know they made it, uh, they made it for other systems, too. 
arena are you game mm -hmm. so i think this is where you're like putting things against each other yeah you i don't it's your scoreboard i guess oh i see so this is where you would send in your scores for certain games yeah Cool. You would actually have to take a picture of it, get that picture developed. <laughs> Send it in. Oh, brother, that's like Yeah, sedated. things were very different then. So it looks like your game got an 8.7. Yeah. Now, I'm wondering, too, since this is Nintendo, do they never give anything a really bad score? I think they've done that in the past. Um, I mean, these scores actually seem pretty pretty decent. Like, like honest. Yeah, like, this is how yeah. I pretty much feel about it. Bugs Life 6.2, yeah. There's a bad, oh, that was a bad score right there. Remember that game I saw? 5.2, yeah. Remember, the, what did they say about the graphics? Because the graphics were really the bad. The settings range from, you know. Um, the graphics are marred by graininess. Yeah. That's the first thing you notice by looking at the screenshots. Like, it does yeah. not look like it's taking advantage of all of the 64. WWF Attitude. Uh, so apparently the Game Boy All-Star Baseball is pretty bad, too. I love how they have to tell you the age ratings. Like, I just know them now. <laughs> it's so funny how they actually talk about the game first, and then they tell you at the very end if it sucked or not. Yeah. I mean, granted, I mean, I've seen game. I've had games that have bad reviews and actually were really good games, so you always got to take reviews with a cup of tea, but I just think it's weird how they get you all hyped up and then they disappoint you later with the actual yeah. score. <laughs> and then uh, coming up uh, next... I'm curious what this is about, because it says... It says that uh, Mickey will make his appearance in two N64 games and three Game Boy Color games, but... Well, one of them was the racing game, but I'm thinking that those might have been canceled. Yeah, because the only one I can think of is the Mickey racing game and, like, the Tetris game for 64. Mm -hmm. um, but then we also have Paper Mario, which was then called Super Mario Adventure, which is interesting, and Kirby just being called Kirby 64. Um... Until it was called Kirby and the Crystal Shards. Um, here's some more previews. Rare look. <laughs> they, yeah. would, they would hold on to that company for another two years. Yeah. Before they gave up on them. That's crazy. Just more news. Coming Re soon. Release forecast oh pokemon pinball is a lot of fun the gba version is actually better though oh and here we have this is what you were talking about well no yeah yeah it came with racer for a little bit but there's actually a bundle that came with rogue squadron oh before. rogue squadron that's right okay i was getting those mixed up for some yeah reason. but Oh my gosh, Sears Funtronics. That's the place I bought my Genesis back in 92. <laughs> or 93, actually. Now, this says it's an advanced controller. What was the difference? Or are they just saying that this is... It's an advanced controller. It's just a controller. It's, an, it's a controller. Okay, I was wondering if it was like a different... No, nope, it's just a controller. Okay, because it looks exactly the same. Got all these. Get a free t-shirt. Funko Land. I remember Funko Land. Yeah, before they got swallowed by the devil. Yeah. And, and All-Star Baseball 2000 again! Yay! <laughs> so, yeah, that was... That was volume 121 of Pokemon... Pokemon Power. Nintendo Power <laughs> from June of 1999. How much money did we just save the viewer? Um, $4.95 US or $5.95 Canadian. So that's what we're doing here. We're providing value, value. to our Pixel Slayers. Right here. Yep. That's why you watch us. It's for the value. The value. And that Eevee looks weird. Like, the rest of these look normal, but that Eevee looks weird. I don't trust them. Too much Photoshop. Yeah. Anyways, uh, we're Sari and Frankie Torres with Pixel Slayers. And uh, check out our other videos. We've got a couple more of these on our channel that we'll be putting in the end card. And, uh, yeah, we hope to see you around again soon. Bye. Bye.